what's going on guys, it's ETA Prime. This week, I'm gonna be covering the LaunchBox tutorial. So today on Unbroken Studio Software Tutorials, we're gonna be covering Super Nintendo. A few other SNES tutorials have been made in the past, but today we're gonna to be focusing on a standalone emulator called SNES 9X. I've been using this for years, and in my opinion, it is the best Super Nintendo emulator for any platform, really. Let's go ahead and get started here. First thing you're gonna need are some Super Nintendo games. I have mine on my desktop in a folder named SNES. I'm just gonna open it up. Mine are already unzipped. If yours are zipped, you can leave them just like that. We're gonna to navigate to our LaunchBox directory. Mine is C Drive, Users, ETA Prime, LaunchBox. We wanna to go to our Games folder, Platforms, and what I'm gonna do is just put my games right here. So I know exactly where they are, easy to access. Let's start LaunchBox. If you're prompted to update, go ahead and do it. You're gonna get some cool new features. So this tutorial is going to be short, sweet, and straight to the point. Let's go ahead and get started. First, we need to import our ROMs. Go to Tools, Import, ROM Files. When going through these menus, make sure you read through, make sure you understand why you're clicking the next button. We're going to be importing our ROM files here. Next, from here we can add a folder or we can just add files. Since mine are already in the SNES folder, I'm just gonna add a whole folder here. Click add. We gotta navigate to our LaunchBox directory where we just placed our ROMs. Mine's this PC, C drive, users, ETA Prime, LaunchBox, Games, SNES. Click OK. Next, Platform for Imported ROMs. We're going to go to the drop down menu and find Super Nintendo Entertainment System right here and click Next. Now we need to choose an emulator, but we don't have SNES installed yet, so we're going to click Add. From the drop down menu, make sure SNES 9X is chosen. One of my favorite parts about LaunchBox is this little blue text here. We're gonna go ahead and click on this. It's gonna open up a web browser for us and bring us to the SNES 9X website. Now, they don't host their own downloads, but we can go over to the side here, click Downloads. There's a list here of places we can download it. Now, I mainly use emulatorzone.com, never had any trouble here. There are two versions, 32-bit and 64. If you're running Windows 32-bit, grab the 32. If you're running 64, you can use either, but I suggest you use the 64-bit. It's gonna download very quickly. I'm using Chrome, so it usually pops down in the bottom here. It's gonna go to your downloads directory, as long as that's where you have your downloads going. Show in folder. From here, we need to extract it. Now I'm using 7-zip. Extract to SNES 9X. We're going to take this and we're going to place it in our LaunchBox folder under Emulators. So, right click, copy. We're going to find our LaunchBox folder again. C Drive, Users, ETA Prime, LaunchBox. You can always pin it to the side here if you'd like to. In here, if you do not have an Emulators folder, Go ahead and make one. This is going to make life so much easier. So we're going to right click, new, folder, and we're just going to name it emulators. Open that folder up. We're going to paste SNES 9X right in here. Let's go ahead and close these down. Emulator application path. Now we need to find SNES 9X. Click browse. C drive, users, whatever your username is, and we'll find LaunchBox. Emulators, SNES 9X. Now, if nothing's showing up in here, that's totally fine. Down at the bottom here, we're gonna go to all files. Make sure you're choosing the application path here. Just double click. Now we're gonna add a default command line parameter to launch SNES 9X in full screen when we start a game in LaunchBox. Very easy to do, just type in hyphen full screen. Last option here, 
extract ROM archives before running. If your ROMs are zipped, go ahead and leave this check. If they're unzipped already, you don't have to worry about it. Either way works, so I'm gonna leave mine checked. Click OK. Next, would you like to move or copy files? I wanna leave them in their original location. I already put them where I want them, in my LaunchBox folder, under Games and Platforms. So I'm gonna use the files in their current location. Search for game information from LaunchBox Games Database. I always leave this checked. I don't really worry about Wikipedia, but you can try it out if you'd like. Next, would you like to download images for your games? Of course we would. That's why we're using LaunchBox. It's so easy to do it. We're gonna scroll through here. If there's something you don't want, like let's say screenshot of gameplay, you're just gonna uncheck it. Now these images don't take up much space, but if you're importing thousands of games, it can really add up. I just always leave mine checked because I have plenty of space on this PC. Click Next. If you don't have an EMU Movies account, I recommend going to sign up right now. It is free to use. There is a donation version, which adds a few extra perks. I'm using the free version right now, and I actually plan on donating very shortly because the website is awesome. It grabs some really good music and a lot of videos for us. Same thing with the last image importer. If there's something you don't want in here, go ahead and uncheck it. Next. Would you like to specify any custom options? Not for SNES. It's pretty much straightforward, so we're just gonna click on Next. Under the name, these are the games that we're importing. This is the file location. This is the extension of the game we're importing. Click Finish. Now it's gonna download all of our box art and metadata. I'm only importing 20 games, so it's not gonna take that long. If you are importing, let's say, the whole SNES library, it could take a while, so sit back and relax. When your games are successfully imported, click OK. Over on the left-hand side, we'll get a new option for Super Nintendo. So I like to just scroll through here, make sure LaunchBox grabbed all of the correct box art. So I look at the name and the box art. For Super Nintendo, it does a really great job. Well, for most emulators, it does a great job. If you have a ROM that's named Funky, it might mess it up, but you can always add that box art later. It looks like I've imported everything correctly here. So we're almost ready to play some awesome Super Nintendo games. We just need to set up the SNES 9X controller. This is very simple to do. We're going to go over the input settings and a few video settings. We can launch SNES 9X from within LaunchBox. Just right click on any game. Open SNES 9X. So from here, we're just going to go to Input. Input Configuration. Now there are tons of Windows compatible controllers out there right now. My personal favorite is the Xbox One S controller. It has Bluetooth built in and it connects right up with my PC. Coming in second place is the old school Xbox 360 wired controller. You can get them real cheap and they just work. So from here, I'm gonna choose controller one, but you can set up five controllers with this emulator. This is very straightforward. Make sure your controller is either plugged in or connected to your PC. We're going to click on the first option here. This is our D-pad. So on our controller, we'll press up, left, down, right, B, A, Y, X, start, select, left trigger, right trigger. For the up left, up right, down right, down left, I leave this alone because the emulator will automatically know when we're pressing up and left. This usually just messes me up. It might be my controller, but I'm not sure. I've just never messed with this option here. Click OK. We're going to go over a few video settings here. Video. Display configuration. The first option is output method. I always leave mine on direct 3D, but you can experiment if you'd like. If you're getting lag with any of these settings, just try another one. We're gonna leave full screen unchecked because when we launch a game in LaunchBox, it's automatically gonna go full screen because we added that command line parameter. 
emulate full screen, stretch image, maintain aspect ratio. Some of you may like 8.7, but I love 4.3. I always turn on show frame rate so I can see if I'm hitting that sweet 60 FPS spot. VSync. Now, if you notice any tearing while playing a game, the screen may look a little funky every once in a while. Turn VSync on and see if that helps. I've never had trouble with it, so I've never had to mess with it. Frame skipping. Now, if you've tried Direct Draw, Direct 3D, OpenGL, and your games are still lagging, you may have to turn on frame skipping. I try to avoid frame skipping like the plague because, in my opinion, I hate it. But you may have to turn it up if you have a lower end machine. I would suggest try two to three. I'm gonna leave mine on zero. Output image processing. Now everything in here is going to be personal preference. We have some fake scan lines, TV mode. Now I'm not a big fan of created scan lines. If I'm playing on an old CRT TV, that's a different story, but Generated scan lines don't look natural to me, so I do not like any of these. Straight out of the box, SNES 9X looks amazing, so I don't mess with these at all. A very popular one is HQ4X. It kind of unpixelates it, and in my opinion, it makes it look kind of like a painting. I'm not a big fan of it. Go through here, see what you like. You have to experiment a little bit. Same thing with high res. We just have more options here. High res scan lines, TV mode, HQ4X. Full screen display settings. Now, if you're getting lag, you can go on down, but I find that 1920 by 1080 works perfectly on my system. Enable triple buffering. It's up to you. I never leave it checked. Seems to perform fine without it. If you're using output image processing, either high res or the normal, going to need to leave transparency effects on and high resolution support. You can also blend high res images and that's about it for video settings. It's just a lot of testing and tuning here to see what you like the best. Click OK. We're going to exit SNES 9X. So we're now ready to play some awesome Super Nintendo games. If you don't have the paid version of LaunchBox then you don't have controller automation. Controller automation is great because you can set up a hotkey on your controller to exit an emulator and come back to LaunchBox. If you don't have the paid version, you can press escape on your keyboard, but having a hotkey on your controller is just so much simpler. Let me go ahead and start a game here, one of my favorites. Joe and Mac. Just double click. Our cursor disappeared. We have our FPS down in the lower right hand corner and it went full screen. So one of the reasons I love SNES 9X is because it runs on a lot of systems. I used to run this same emulator on an old Asus netbook. It had a 1.6 gigahertz single core Atom CPU. I want to say it even had one gigabyte of RAM back in the day. It had Windows XP on it and SNES 9X ran perfectly. I had to turn the resolution down a little bit. That wasn't much of a problem back then exit out of here. So that's it for now, guys. We really appreciate you watching and hope this helped you out. I hope you have SNES 9X running at full speed on your LaunchBox system right now. Before I get out of here, I just want to show you guys what you're missing if you don't have the paid version of LaunchBox. So when you pay for LaunchBox, you also get Big Box Mode. <laughs> So for me, I'm using the Critical Zone theme. This was created by Critical Sid over at the forums, and I wanna give him a shout out because it is beautiful. Now the system videos that you're seeing playing here were made by Viking, and those are the most beautiful system videos I have ever seen on any front end. I have used Hyperspin, a track mode, emulation station, every Android front end you can think of, and I have not found anything as nice as LaunchBox and Big Box. It's so easy to use, it'll import all of your artwork for you. And really, that's the hardest part when setting up your front end, making it look good. LaunchBox solves all of those problems.
So I'll go right into here. There are endless possibilities with big box. You can make it look however you want. We could have vertical box art, vertical pause screens, whatever you want. But I love the cover flow system here. I have two younger children and it's just so easy for them to go ahead, pick up the controller, scroll through, see a cool picture and play a game. It just works great. I love LaunchBox. So like I said, really appreciate you watching. Hope this helped you out. If you guys have any questions, let us know in the comments below. If you have any requests, also leave a comment and we'll try our hardest to get a video made for you guys. Like always, thanks for watching.